Welcome to a brand new week. Uh, we've been talking about fruitfulness from previous week and we will continue this week talking about fruitfulness. And we've talked about several factors relating to our fruitful life. The fact that the earth itself is fruitful, that God has given us seed to sow, which is our talent, our gifts, his grace and investment in us. We've talked about how we can make our lives fruitful and God's command on us to be fruitful. Now we are taking a look at how God sees us when we don't act or live a fruitful life. So Matthew chapter 21 verse 19. And seeing a fig tree by the road, he came to it and found nothing on it but leaves. And said to it, let no fruit grow on you ever again. Immediately the fig tree withered away. It is just stunning to see what Jesus did to this fig tree. Because it would seem uncharacteristic of Jesus. Why do I say that? Jesus was noted for miracles. Miracles were the hallmark of his life and of his ministry. And when you look at the ministry of Jesus, you see many miracles. In the miracles of Jesus, he takes something bad and makes it good. He takes something that is not doing well and it does well. The sick become healed, the blind see. He doesn't make a situation worse off. When there is a storm, he calms it. That's how Jesus works. However, in this particular miracle, Jesus takes a situation that is not good and makes it worse off. And, and that should puzzle us. Why was Jesus so vehement against this tree? There could be other eschatological explanations for it, but I'm just going to look at it from the surface of it. Um, why did Jesus react so vehemently? Why did he look at a tree that was not bearing fruit? Why didn't he just say, bear fruit? He had the power to do that. But he actually denied it further from ever being useful. And this is not rare if you take into account parables of Jesus and teachings of Jesus. In the parable of the talents, we see it. Jesus talked about the fact the person who was unproductive had his talent taken from him and given to the one who is productive. Our normal response would be, if somebody is unproductive, we encourage them. If somebody is wasting resources, we encourage them. However, that is not God's approach. God does not take kindly to wastage. So when he says to us, be fruitful, it's a command. And if we persist in not being fruitful, he takes from us the power to ever be fruitful again. And that's a very severe judgment on us. That means if God gives me his grace, he gives me gifts, he gives me ability, he opens doors for me, he gives me opportunity, and I mess it up, and I don't work hard, and I'm lazy, and I, I don't use his gifts well, he will take what he has given to me from my hand. That is God's judgment. So God does not pamper fruitlessness. God does not encourage fruitlessness. And so the warning to all of us is if we keep living unproductive lives, squandering opportunities, abusing the gifts of God, misusing his grace, he will actually deny us everything that he has given to us. He took the one talent from the person he gave to, and he took life from this fig tree because that story later says it withered and died on the ground because it is wasting the nutrients of the ground. If we fail to use God's gifts to be fruitful, unfortunately, he'll take his gifts and abilities from us. So, we have no other recourse except to be fruitful and maximize the opportunities that God has for us. So this week, let us be fruitful. Let's pray. Say with me, Heavenly Father, make my life fruitful. 
Help me to use all the gifts you have given me to their fullest. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. May the Lord find you a very faithful and fruitful servant. I'm Pastor Mensah Otabel. Shalom, peace, and life to you. <music>